Mitch for moving the mic like we discussed earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say thanks to Benita. Um, I want to thank Molly, Mitch, uh, Jennifer, Stanley. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming. Uh, I want to read a little bit from this book, Because, which exists. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you tonight about my grandparents um, who lived in a lake house at the base of Mount Rainier. I want to tell you about my grandfather who built the house with his bare hands. I want to tell you how they say he hammered the nails with his fists, how he crushed these huge spiders with his fingers, how he threw logs for fun. And I want to tell you about his wife, my grandmother, who'd leave dead mice in the kitchen for the live ones. I want to tell you how, after my grandfather died, she would stay awake at night, sit at the kitchen window, and watch for the neighbor kids. She was convinced we were stealing the gravel from the driveway. I want to tell you a story my grandfather, or my grandmother told us grandkids about how that driveway gravel came from Finland, from great granite rocks my grandfather carried over with him after the war. Rocks he crumbled between his hands to spread along the ground, build new earth. I want to tell the children I don't have yet about my grandfather. I want to tell them how he would do cartwheels when he was excited and couldn't contain it. I want to tell them how he would sing when he was sad or angry, when he wanted not to be. I want to build a family myself, one that would make my grandfather do silent cartwheels for miles. I want to tell you more about the house on the lake, how the faucets and showers there spit only lake water for so many years. Waters you, water you shouldn't drink, they said, but was fine for showering or washing your hands before eating. I want to tell you how when my grandparents visited us in our regular house in town, they would bring these big plastic jugs to fill with water from our garden hose. I want to tell you how this is the same hose I was told not to drink from, not because it wasn't drinkable, but because my mother didn't like it when we drank without a glass. I want to tell you how when I asked my parents why grandfather filled those jugs, with hose water every time he visited, they said it was because grandfather was secretly in charge of making sure the lake didn't run out of water. <laughs> and it had not rained enough lately. I want to tell you how I used to imagine my grandparents out at the end of the dock when they got home from these visits, pouring water from our house's hose into the lake in the middle of the night. I want to tell you how my grandfather would tip the jugs one after the other while my grandmother stood guard to make sure none of the neighbors saw. I want to tell you how in the summertime, when we went swimming with the gravel-stealing neighbor kids, I felt like our family owned more of the lake than they did. Because we had filled it ourselves, because the lake was something our family had built and maintained. How it was something our family loved most. It was our shared secret. I want to do cartwheels. I want to sing away sadnesses and angers. I want to pound nails with my fist and build beautiful things. I want family to be my favorite thing. I want my grandfather to come back to life. I want to ask him some questions. I want to know about the war he fought. I want to hear the stories he never told. I want to know what he meant at the party for his and my grandmother's 50th wedding anniversary when he raised a shaky hand in a salute and said, it's been a long war. <laughs> I, I want to know if that was a joke or if he was confused, thought it was an actual war he was in and got all of us family confused for soldiers. I want to know what it's like to fight in a war. I want to know what it's like to have no choice but to go and fight. I want him to explain it to me. I want to tell you how when my grandfather was dying, he was dying of Parkinson's disease. So the closer his body got to giving out, the more it shook in protest. I want to tell you how towards the very end of it, my grandmother said he started seeing things on the walls. I want to tell you how even though he built those lake house walls with his bare hands, now they were attacking him. And I want to tell you how when he had to stay in a hospital bed, my grandmother had him moved from the bedroom they'd shared for 40 years into one closer to the front door so it'd be easier for the emergency people to come get him when they needed to. I want to tell you how the summer I was 18 and about to leave for college on the East Coast, my grandmother went on a trip to Reno with some of her friends. 
when I tell you how my grandfather had been doing better the past few months and how very tired my grandmother was and how much she needed a break. I want to tell you how I do this. might be the last time I'd have a chance to spend some time alone with my grandfather. I want to tell you how he wasn't supposed to drink coffee, but he asked for it, and so I gave it to him. I want to tell you how we sipped from old mugs and watched old videos of old Mariners baseball games because he liked to keep score, even with the tremor so bad in his old hands he couldn't hold a pencil. I want to tell you how when he woke in the middle of the night, he said he saw spiders crawling out of the walls, and I didn't know what to do but slap at what I couldn't see. I want to explain to you what it felt like when he pointed his shaky hands around the room at spiders breaking through and saying, shaking, trying to sing, there, 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 and I crushed them beneath my palm each time, scrambling and shouting back, don't worry, don't worry, I got you. I want to know what would have happened if he had seen something other than spiders, something too big for me to kill with bare hands. I want to tell you how when I was a little kid visiting the lake house, my grandfather would take me out to the dock and he'd pick me up and he'd throw me as far as he could. And I would spread my arms wide and it would be like I was flying just out high above the lake, farther, farther away. I want to know how many people my grandfather watched die in the war. I want to ask him how many last words he remembered. I want my family to be proud of me. I want my wife especially to be proud of me. But I want to confess I've never given it all I've got. I've never left it all on the field. I've never given 110%. I want to give my wife and my children my all. I want to die having left it all on the field. I want to learn to cartwheel. I want to learn to sing. I want to pound nails with my fist and grow beautiful blossoming trees out of granite. I want to know if I really meant to kill myself that time I tried. I want to know what would have happened if I had. I want to sing at the top of my lungs sometimes. I want life after death and assurances against hell. I want to know if my grandfather ever held his own rifle to his head during the war and thought about how the bullet might feel, if he would hear it, if he might smell it. I want to know if he sang. I want to sing. I want to sing at the top of my lungs. I want to sing at the top of my lungs. I want to sing at the top of my lungs. I want my wife to know that with her I am both more and less afraid of death. And I want to sing at the top of my lungs. I want to sing at the top of my lungs. I want to sing at the top of my lungs. I want my wife to know that because of her I have never again tried to kill myself. I want us to be us forever, never parting. I want you to know that I mean this completely and sentimentally, but unabashedly and honestly and without shame. I want to know if we love harder or if it just seems that way. And I want to say that maybe this is just the nature of love, of family, that it's like the hardest granite for those who are hardest in it. Thank you.